How to help a friend who is struggling with alcohol. Uh, the first thing is to encourage them to open up and communication is incredibly important in this situation. We want them to feel safe and that they would not be judged and because there's a lot of shame and guilt and embarrassment associated with alcohol or any drug abuse. So getting past that is super important to let them know that you care about them, that you're there to support them and you're not there to judge them, that you extend your sympathy or empathy and you just want to see them getting better. So that is the first step. And this in involves a verbal contract by them to totally admit if they are using again that they can't, they shouldn't hide it from you, that it's in their best interest uh, to let you know everything. And even if it's a failure, like a relapse, which is not really a failure, um, but if they might see it that way, is to let them know it's okay to include you. The worst thing you want is for them to hide information from you because now you can't help them effectively at all. It's important to decide what they want to do. Uh, do they want to continue as is, maybe illustrate to them some of the consequences that are going on because of their use. Sometimes they not, may not know what's going on, they can't see it as clearly as you do, but if you can see where there's an impairment in their life, where their quality of life is deteriorating, if they're losing friendships for example, or they're losing out on work, missing work, being late for work, being fired, those sort of things. Um, sometimes it's not so obvious though, there might be weight loss, health decline, um, they're just a shadow of their former self. It's harder for that person to actually see that. So discussing all of this is important. Asking them about their past, um, not just how much they've been drinking, but for how long have they tried to quit before. And so getting them out of their shell is, is the, really important, as I said. The next thing to do is to discuss what they want and then, then perhaps to discuss this with their own healthcare professional or a drug treatment counselor um, or an addictionist or a psychiatrist with, with uh, subspecialty training in addiction medicine. Now at this point they can get informed information as far as what's available in the community, like a rehab, whether it's inpatient or outpatient, do they need to go to detox? Some people have been through that many times before and a total abstinence approach is not helpful for them, that they want to engage in a harm reduction pathway instead. Uh, so there's many uh, roads to, appro to approach here and it all depends on their previous history. Uh, it's important as well to uh, ensure that they don't go cold turkey without seeing a medical professional. This is because alcohol can induce uh, seizures when it's abruptly stopped and instead they should be put on a bridging medication in the benzodiazepine class. This is commonly known as Valium or Versed, um, Ativan or just some of the names of those medications but it's important to get on them just for a short time whether it's uh, one to three days to help prevent the uh, severe withdrawal syndrome and seizures. So that is important and once they are through that initial stabilization time through the initial early detox uh, the good thing with people who are abusing alcohol is it's very quick for them to bounce back and have a clear head, and unlike other drugs. Uh, so at that point they are open and available, ideally, uh, for, for learning. And the quitting part is only 15% of the work. The other 85% of the work is to learn new behaviors associated with a healthy lifestyle and not relying on the alcohol. So lifestyle changes, and that's to, to learn about these changes, I think in this situation the best thing would be to encourage them to go to an inpatient rehab because here they are buffered from the stresses of life, they are removed from uh, triggers and they can be with like-minded individuals going through similar problems. A person can learn in rehab uh, new techniques of, of opening up, learning how to talk to other people, not being afraid to share what's going on in their, their, their minds, to uh, not be afraid of sharing their emotions with others. These are all healthy things, not just in normal mental health but uh, also in recovery as well. So these things are very, very helpful to learn the techniques. Um, other tools of the trade, and per se, is for people to learn how to uh, also communicate about it, whether it's through journaling, uh, to balance these things out with, with some recreation in their life, to start having some fun as well, uh, to learn how to recognize um, high risk situations for relapse, i.e. slippery pe places, peoples and people and things. So slippery meaning like for a relapse, people are, are avoiding people who are in this situation if they're uh, an alcohol, alcohol user to pr avoid uh, spending time with other uh, people who are drinking, to avoid engagements where there's going to be alcohol flowing, um, going to certain places of uh, not going to bars for example and certain things like getting the alcohol bottles out of the house. So 
All of these things can be very helpful uh, to helping an alcoholic friend, but the most important thing, as I summarize now, is to have open, candid, blunt conversations with them to indicate to them that it's safe to talk to you, that you're not there to pass judgment, that you're there because you care about them. Then going on to seek um, information from another uh, professional who's qualified, whether it's the family doctor, an addictionist, or an addiction psychiatrist, and a drug treatment counselor to find out what's available in the community and what options are available. Finally, going into a rehab was my best suggestion. Inpatient is better than outpatient because a person is buffered and away from life stresses in the situation and they're also away from the triggers. They can learn the lifestyle changes that are needed to have an on going and enduring recovery and this takes time. We think about how long it takes for a person to develop an addiction. It can be many months to many years and to undo these behaviors will equally require many months and many years of treatment and ongoing care. So I hope that helps. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave it in the comment box below. Thank you. If you or a loved one are looking for help with substance abuse, call our 24-7 helpline at 1-800-615 1067. A caring addiction advisor is awaiting your call.